And finally, my loving father-in-law provided the perfect end to a perfect day. Mm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen and friends of my daughter. <laughs> there comes a time in every wedding reception when the man who paid for the damn thing is allowed to speak a word or two of his own. And I should like to take this opportunity, sloshed as I may be, <laughs> to say a word or two about Martin. As far as I'm concerned, my daughter could not have chosen a more delightful, charming, witty, responsible, wealthy, let's not deny it, well-placed, good-looking, and fertile young man. <laughs> than Martin as her husband. And I therefore ask the question, why the hell did she marry Gerald instead? <laughs> because Gerald is the sort of man we used to describe at school as a complete prick. <laughs> If I may use a gardening simile here, <laughs> if his entire family may be likened to a compost heap, and I think they can, <laughs> then Gerald is the biggest weed growing out of it. I think he's the sort of man people emigrate to avoid. <laughs> I remember the first time I met Gerald, I said to my wife, She's the lovely woman propping up that horrendous old lush of a mother of his. Either this man is suffering from serious brain damage, or the new vacuum cleaners arrived. <laughs> As for his family, they are quite simply the most intolerable herd of steaming social animals I've ever had the misfortune of turning my nose up to. I spurn you as I would spurn a rabid dog. <laughs> I would like to propose a toast <laughs> to the caterers. <laughs> to the pigeon who crapped on the groom's family's limousine at the church. As for the rest of you around this table, not directly related to me, you can sod off. I wouldn't trust any of you to sit the right way on a toilet seat. Upon the character of the king depends the plot, and so there are many different kinds of king. The benign king. The benign king with a physical defect. 